Hello and welcome back to Arts World in Liberia. I'm relaxing by the Bommy Hills outside Monrovia and it's a quiet and peaceful place for reflection. Now, when you're on death row in Texas, America, there is plenty of time for reflection. I really, really like to knit. I like the sort of meditative in the knitting and I like the concept of that you can make huge big things all consisting of just one thread. A friend of mine told me about uh, Le Tricoteurs, which were these women who would knit next to the guillotine during the French Revolution. And exactly in the moment when the guillotine blade separated the head from the body, they would drop a stitch in their knitting. This creates little holes, so you could actually count in the knitting how many executions there had been during one day. And so it was this connection between knitting and death penalty that was the beginning of the project. To begin with, I was just sort of thinking I had to get in touch with someone that was actually on death row, but I don't know why. but doing all the research of the conditions that these prisoners are living under, I understood that I wanted to knit the whole cell. Researched about two years ago, and she had written me a letter saying that she wanted to do a project together. But when I got in here, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> she's all pretty and everything. And I'm just like, not knowing what to do because I'm locked in this cage. And it's like, I'm trapped in here with desires and stuff like that and passions. And I'm like, looking around, not really wanting to look at her, right? <laughs> to begin with, I read through pen pal requests all over the United States. There is about 3,500 people on death row. So eventually I just eliminated it down to Texas. One of the reasons that I chose to write to Carlton was that he was interested in art. And also he did not claim to be innocent. Meeting someone in this situation amplifies every emotion. So I did not expect at all to, to get emotionally attached to Carlton. This here is the food slot. So this is where all the food is passed. Uh, obviously, this is the windows. And the window at the back is actually even further up on the wall. So he has to stand on his bunk and really so that it's really hard for him to actually look outside. When you deal with someone in this situation, you in a way have to thread so carefully. And it's really important that Carlton not only felt that it's his piece, but that he doesn't feel that I'm sort of stamping on him or using him or things like this. So you have to be very sort of careful. Once we figured out what we wanted to do, we started seeing that we we see kind of the same vision, right, of, of how, how we, we would want the project to pre be presented. Well, like some of the symbols and everything that surrounds the, the symbols and stuff. It was Carlton who decided all the patterns. On this wall here is pretty much only gang symbols. This is the world that he, he is surrounded by inside of this prison. Up in the roof, it's what's called a um, chaos star. According to Carlton, what the prisonerism do is basically look up in the ceiling, trying to somehow understand what is going on, but the only thing that you can really see is this chaos, which is why he wanted this up there. I don't know how the cell has changed after his execution, but I just know that it is the art piece in itself has changed because of it. I know that when Carlton was alive, it somehow held a sort of hope to it. It was a more happy
PP, if you can say it like this. Whilst now it is far more dark because he is not there. <laughs>